What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple and it is official. Apple just announced their first event of the year with the title Peak Performance and it will take place on March the 8th at 10 a.m. Pacific time as a live stream. Peak Performance. Get it like take a peek as in look like peekaboo but you might trick yourself as peak performance thinking it's oh it's top performance but it's spelled differently with two e's Whew, apple you're so clever but i have to spell it out to some of you because there are some really dumb people in the comments or this guy who made up his own graphics for it and screwed it up idiot but let's do what i always do decode and dissect this invite using my 15 plus years of skills to analyze this invite and clearly we're gonna see faster devices for Apple's event. In fact, we'll be taking a peek at them. Now, Apple Senior VP of Marketing, Greg Joswiak, posted this video teaser of an Apple logo on stage that we might be able to jump into. And that instantly tells me, Apple has just created the first teleportation device in history for this announcement. And oh my God, that would be a huge deal for all of mankind, just a truly historic moment. So I cannot wait. But more realistically, we might get our first look at the new M2 processor inside a new Mac because the color palette matches what Apple showed off when they launched the M1 chip. This time, it's just fancier. Or Apple is teasing that they are connected to the quantum realm and we are going to see the very first trailer of Ant-Man Quantum Mania at the Apple event. Holy crap! Like, is this is going to be the best Apple event ever. And now, yeah, you know what? It makes total sense. Even Ragsy1083 was feeling me on this too. Now you can also go inside this new Apple realm by going to their mobile site and clicking on the invite with their augmented reality experience. I'm going into the Apple realm! Woo! I'm back here. Now, I know some of y'all are just as pathetic as I am, so let me know what does this invite mean? I wanna hear what else comes up in your brain. So, you know, hey, put in the comments. I'm sure y'all are kind of sickos too, but let's let's just bring this back down to earth, okay? And this theme of peak performance likely means we'll be seeing new performance gains with all the products announced, and we should because we should never be going backwards. So let's give you the full Apple event preview and break down everything we have heard and we'll potentially see at the event. You know, it's truly the Apple-tizer to start the year or for people who can't speak properly, they call it the Apple-tizer! Okay, first up, we're expecting to see the next gen iPhone SE. It would be the third generation, but don't expect any big changes cosmetically. It's gonna be the same, so you'll still have the big forehead and chin, but you'll also have that awesome Touch ID button. We're expecting all new internals, including a new A15 processor, inside and 5G connectivity. Apple is positioning this as their most affordable 5G iPhone, and with the current 64 gig iPhone SE starting at 399, it will likely be priced similarly. I'd love to see an entry-level iPhone, maybe even around $299. I don't think they're gonna keep older models, but just even get it below, you know, close to that 300 price point. Now, the new SE, it also might be the perfect new iPhone for my mom, unless she really wants to jump to the all touchscreen design. Mama, I know you're watching, and guess what? You know who will be helping her learn how to use it, this guy. Now, another product we are expecting to get a peek at is the next-gen iPad Air. This would be the fifth-gen iPad Air, and it's another product that we aren't expecting to see a new redesign for. It should look exactly the same. But again, a new faster A15 chip and 5G connectivity. But if it's using the same 5G chip as the current iPad mini, it could potentially be limited to only sub-6 gigahertz 5G networks that are more widespread instead of also supporting the faster millimeter wave flavor of 5G. Now, the other iPad Air update, a FaceTime camera with a wide angle for center stage support to follow you around during your video calls. Maybe we'll get some new colors, but these are some solid under the hood updates. And if you have a current 4th gen iPad Air and you don't use 5G, you don't plan to, you're gonna be likely using it exactly in the same way. So I think you're good with what you got. Now the big reveals at the Apple event could be centered around the rumors of all new Macs and the unveiling of Apple's M2 chip for the very first time. Now, Apple recently filed for three new Macs through the Eurasian Economic Database over a week ago, and that has typically been a strong signal that new products are coming soon. They did the same thing for what's believed to be the new iPhone SE and iPad Air before that as well. So what could the new Macs be? Well, the biggest buzz 
is around potentially seeing a new higher end version of the Mac mini with an all new design. And that was leaked by John Prosser last June. We've showed it to you a bunch of times and then also potentially new M1 Pro and M1 Max chip options inside. This would bring a smaller metal frame and a shiny plexiglass like top with ports galore, including four Thunderbolt ports, two USB-A ports, an ethernet and HDMI port. It would also include a magnetic power port similar to what the 24 inch M1 iMac has. And the thinking is, is that if they go with more power and a Mac mini pro type device, they're gonna stick with the high end M1 chips. Or let's say they upgrade the entry level, they could potentially introduce a new M2 chip with more graphics cores, but it would not be at that same level, the pro or the max. All right, the latest rumor buzz also that got a lot of steam recently is around a potential new 13 inch MacBook Pro that will be identical. In fact, absolutely identical to the current M1 13 inch MacBook Pro, including its touch bar. And this would potentially become the entry level version of the MacBook Pro lineup, but with a new M2 chip inside. The M2 is expected to have the same eight core CPU as the M1, but it will include speed, efficiency, and GPU improvements with nine and 10 core GPU options compared to the M1's seven and eight core GPU options. And if that's the thinking behind these Macs, these could account for all three new Macs, two new Mac mini configurations, and then a new 13 inch MacBook Pro, but of course we won't know until it's official. And I know so many of you are just waiting for a new rumored MacBook Air or a new large screen iMac Pro type machine. And we aren't forgetting about the new high-end Mac Pros either, but all reports claim that those will be coming later in the year. So that's what we're expecting at the March 8th Apple event. And when you look at that breakdown, this really is the Apple teaser of the year. Now 2022 still in my mind, it's gonna be another year of the Mac. And Maybe we could be surprised, but there's always a little excitement in the air when a new Apple event is coming. Even if we think we know everything, we don't always know everything. And remember, you can always watch along with me for BTZ's live coverage of the event. I'll be doing my pre-show, my play-by-play -play reactions during the event, and then we'll also have the post-show. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna do live calls, a little big bingo. So make sure you tune into my channel for that as well. And the good times start rolling, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time for me. The keynote starts at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So I will see you there. And you know, um, there was actually a time where people weren't too sure and wondering if the Apple event was actually gonna happen or not. Um, people thought invites would drop on Tuesday and they didn't. Well, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, who put out the first you know, March 8th date as the idea, um, maybe he was a little skittish because it didn't happen. And then John Prosser poked a little fun back at him with this tweet on Tuesday, sans eyebrows. But now that the official event is on, Mark, you can rest easy. He still gets to keep his eyebrows. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my latest videos. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. I will see you on the next video, and I'll see you live at the Apple event March 8th for some uh, peekaboo performance. All right, everybody, take care and be safe. Peace and love.